But look, let's let's uh, bring in somebody who says that he has a plan around gun violence. This is State Senator Joe Wynn. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, Hi, welcome Hi, back to the Morning Update show. How are you? I appreciate it. Well, hopefully sometime soon we can come back for celebratory reasons and not necessarily just tough topics like this as well. But first, I just want to acknowledge the trauma, like you said, has happened. Gun violence is a public health crisis and each and every shooting is a tragedy for those in fact impacted, but also our communities as well. So I appreciate you covering. Yeah, no, no doubt. And for, for people where well, he said celebratory is this because running for for uh, King County executive position. All right. So we we're, we're cleared the path for you here. We've got you in, in, as long as it takes here because you put out this release and you said it's about um, disruption of gun violence. And so because of that, we want to give you space so we can hear what it is that you're talking about. The floor yeah, is yours. I appreciate it. And, and you even mentioned it the data, right? We know that gun violence exists in pockets of poverty and spikes where people are undersourced. And as a county and as a society, we focus too much on incarceration instead of prevention. And even last week, you saw uh, the incumbent and also Mayor Durkin announced that they're going to invest $2 million in community organizations in this space. But if you compare that with what the county just approved, $42 million. So two versus $42 million for the backlog in our criminal legal system, right? We focus on our incarceration facilities, not on prevention. And that shows where our values are. I think council member Jeremiah Zahalai was the only no vote on that effort, uh, but we should be funding peace and violence intervention efforts. And if you look at other jurisdictions, we have examples of other places who are doing this. Uh, California is spending $43 billion on violence intervention, specifically in Sacramento County is 301 million. Tennessee spending 6.3 billion in Shelby County. They're doing 182 million in Florida, right? Florida, 17.6 billion in Hillsborough County. They're spending $286 million in this effort uh, compared to the 2 million that we're looking at right now. We can't just do enough for headlines. We actually have to solve the problems as well. And you mentioned zero youth detention. We can't get to zero youth detention without addressing the culture of gun violence specifically. I think there are 19 youths who are in our facilities right now, most of them are related to, to gun uh, charges. We need to make systemic investments. And this is this is holistic. I know that this is not easy, but in workforce and economic development. Did you know that King County, despite being the 12th largest county in the nation, doesn't have an office of economic development? We should be funding our education system. We need to have access to healthy foods, more affordable housing, quality primary and healthcare, especially mental health. We need to have affordable, reliable public transit. And what's interesting is that if you look at the data, uh, having uh, nature, being nearby nature alleviates uh, gun violence as well. And, and if you look at what the county can do specifically, there's no agency in the county that oversees community centers or coordinating support for them. Even the Youth Achievement Center uh, that, that's being constructed right now, that was community funded and not necessarily through the county. So that's just one example. So our goal should be having a community that is safe, for all people, especially our kids. Young people should be able to run around and play in the streets. Uh, but that requires everyone to come together, to work collaboratively, and you should be able to thrive despite your zip code, right? And we have to address the root causes of what's happening or else we're just gonna come back and have the same conversation again. So what we are doing right now is we're continuing to divest and increase fragmentation in our communities. We're throwing scraps here and there performatively to alleviate guilt, but we need to be investing in our people. So who should be in charge of caring for the young people that we have in our community, right? Community can be doing so much, but we need our elected officials to step up as well. So under investing in our communities is frustrating and it's been happening for too long. And that's why we need leaders who will prioritize our efforts in this space. And this is all stuff that we've talked about for decades. Communities have been fighting for this for decades. And this is not the only example. The youth jail is one too, where the county and the region have perpetually been late on issues that the community has been fighting for decades to address. So what we need to do is uplift the voices of the people in our community who are fighting for change, who have proven solutions, who are doing the work and ensuring that we scale them up to match the crisis that we are in right now. Um, wow. And that's really, that's really the work. It's not gonna be easy, but it also requires us to, to work together to actually get this done. 
No, you know what, Joe? I mean, you really are right on this. And I think um, steeping it in that data is really important for us to understand when we look at King County as the 12th largest county in the nation, and yet our investments are not shaping up to that. What are some of the things that you think people need in terms of, you know, wake up calls? I feel like, you know, us seeing this increase in violence, that should be a wake up call enough to really identify this as a public health crisis and give it the investment it needs. What more can can be done in this issue to kind of wake us up and shake up this county so that we're doing these things from a county level yep. and not just focusing on what cities are doing in their own silos. Yeah, no, you know, as somebody who is from White Center, these are issues we've been dealing with for a long time. And I'll be just perfectly honest with you. I'm tired of trying to convince people that these issues are important because they've been important for our communities. At this point, I demand that our elected officials actually pay attention and prioritize these efforts as well. And that's why in the legislature, I fought so hard for anti-poverty efforts, done so much of criminal justice reform, but really the county needs to step up. And instead of just talking about change, needs to act. So you're right, we do need to raise awareness in the community, but to be perfectly honest, we need our leaders to step up as well. Yeah, I think that that's where we definitely see a, a void. And I think so many people in community speak about this void often. Um, you know, it's interesting because ultimately, I think a lot of people are saying, you know what, we've had so much energy that's been poured into this from a community perspective, but it does take a holistic approach. And community can only do so much if they don't have the support of the county, of the state, of other environments that are going to bring in more resources to to, like you said, scale up all of the solutions that we know work. I mean, just a minute ago, we were talking about credible messengers, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, people have to understand that these are the people that are on the ground every day building relationships. Our elected officials don't do that, but they have to support them. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, Omari. Yeah, I, I want to throw this out there because, you know, I've had an opportunity. Actually, I was just with uh, Executive Constantine and Mayor Durkin uh, before the show. There's a, a homeless um, uh a structure that's being built like two blocks from our studio. But I've had an opportunity now to talk to Executive Constantine quite a few times over the last few weeks on this issue here around gun violence. And I'll throw you the same question um, that, that I threw him was that how do you get people in the county to care? See, what you're talking about is you're talking about investment. You're saying that investment needs to happen and we need to be able to shift the way that we think about some things. And you've offered examples in, in, in uh, Sacramento and down there in Shelby County and in Florida. But for, for that to happen with that amount of money and the money investment here, it's going to take buy-in. And right here, even in the city of Seattle, we struggle every day to try to make people care. Um, you know, and, and for people to look beyond their fiefdoms here, there's seven little individual fiefdoms that, that make up uh, the city of Seattle with these seven districts that we have here. It's difficult to even get people to care in the municipality. How are you planning to get buy-in across the county if you're elected to be able to get the people behind the reallocation of these resources um, that, that you've described that you say are required to see the changes that you want to see? Yeah, there's a couple of things. First off, so oftentimes the communities most impacted by bad policies or these types of situations are then tasked with fixing them as well. And that perpetuates inequities because it is exhausting to have to deal with these issues, but also have to be in charge of fixing them. The first thing we need to do is making sure that we uplift and amplify the voices of those in the community so that the folks who are fighting for change are in fact being heard. We've seen a strong coalition working in this space, whether it was the no youth jail, uh, whether it's investing in the youth achievement center, there are people who care. There are people who, out, who are out there doing the work. So instead of them fighting to make sure that they're being heard, we should be uplifting and amplifying them as well. And it, it is oftentimes top down. So if our leadership isn't prioritizing this, there's no wonder that it's not necessarily out in the zeitgeist of the community uh, in terms of their understanding of this situation. I happen to be from an area that is uh, subject to gun violence, and that's why I personally care about this particular issue. And we have to be telling those stories and uplifting those voices as well. So I do think, I do think people care. The problem is, I think that the people who care are oftentimes being limited by the current structure that we are in as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword where we want to uplift the people doing the work, but also acknowledge that they're also impacted by it. So for me, I think people care. It's incumbent upon the leaders that we have right now to push that message forward.
Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right about that. I think for some people um, here, when they hear it from uh, sometimes uh, the elected officials voice, it, it permeates differently. And yeah. that's kind of what I mean in terms of it being driven by so many folks in community that, you know, oftentimes they feel like, OK, that's not affecting my lived experience. But I think right. so much of this is about painting the picture for them yeah. to understand how it is affecting their lived experience. And that right there, I think, is the central point between it becoming something that is just being dealt with in an urban environment or with those people that are different than me and it becoming something that is like, nah, man, this is a public health crisis. We need to see yeah. it as such. Yeah. You have something else? Well, yeah, because so you hit on a good point here and I actually want to clarify something that the, the people of the Emerald City have a big heart. And yeah. we, we see when it comes to giving, it's very good people that live here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we're, we're, we're pulled apart on specific issues, but this is a good city with good yeah. people and caring people. So I didn't want to infer that the people don't care. Really what I'm saying is how do we get politics? You know, like you have to have I, yeah, no, I, yeah, the I thing is COVID. Why Why everybody did so well on COVID was from the governor all the way down to the dog catcher. Everybody was on the same message. Yep. Everybody was on the same message, 100%. But, you know, I mean, and that took city council members, county council members who might be on different political spectrums coming together on the message, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's really more of my point is like, one, here here in the city of Seattle, and we got a lot of parents that are that are here in the chat right now, they'll tell you that they're hearing deaf being silenced. When it when it comes to to the the murders and the gun violence that's occurring here in the Emerald City and and across the county and and even there's been a lot of silence on the county council council member Germai Zahalai you know of course he's been very vocal there's been a few others but it's a lot of people on the council you know they've been mum um, you know and and that being said what the impact of that is is the normalization when we talk about I, I bring this up often at Emerson Elementary seventy gunshots fired. Everybody should be appalled. Every elected official mm -hmm. should be on the same message. Like, man, this is not okay in our city. This is not okay in our county. These murders that just occurred here, people should be on the same mm -hmm. page. We go back last year, some of the, the, the murders that, that, we, that we've covered here, uh, Lorenzo Anderson Jr., uh, Connor Dasa Holland, so many others, like, and again and again, and we have, it's been silent in this mm -hmm. city. It's been absolutely silent. I'm sorry to sit here and go on a rant. I know your time is short, no, but I mean, it's. I think that the challenge that we see is one, it's not how you make the people to Emerald City or Martin Luther King County care. How do we get these elected officials who are sitting there, who use their platform to fundraise and do all these other things to use their platform to be on message on this one, to address the humanity, the impacts of humanity around gun violence, and two, to get on message and care to work to disrupt gun violence. Well, I mean, you nailed it. I think I think you actually just answered your question. The fact that Gramai Zahala is the only African American council member, I think, in the entire Washington state. And the fact that he's fighting for these issues shows how important representation is in our elected officials. What I've learned in my time in politics is that uh, it's not actually about good or bad, right or wrong, even Democrat or Republican. It's about making sure that your issue is worthy of being discussed and being prioritized. And for so long, our issues have not been. But yet we've now seen some of the most diverse legislative bodies in the history of Washington state, whether it's the state, the councils or even other levels. And we're seeing people start to push for policies that actually impact our communities. It's not happening fast enough, but I've seen it happen in the legislature and I believe it can happen at the county as well. I'm running literally for that reason is to make sure the voices who've been marginalized for too long, who've been underinvested for too long are actually at the table getting the investments they need to get this done. Because the people, like you say, in Emerald City, we do care. We need our leaders with the political will to actually get things done. You know, uh, absolutely, we do. And I think that, you know, lastly, I, I just want to say here that, you know, we look at the demographics, right? I hear what you're talking about. And when we look at the demographics of King County, you know, we understand that a lot of times it's people that are voting for people that it seems as though they have their best interests at heart. So some of these elected officials staying quiet, um, unfortunately, is a part of what they that some of their constituents want for them. So I think it's a both and approach. And I just yeah. wanted to be able to address that because I think that 
partially, we also have folks that are like, hey, I live in an area and this doesn't bother me. I live over, hey, that's over there. It's not really my issue. And I need my elected official to not really say too much because it's not really what we're dealing with over here. So I think you're right that, and Omar is very right about making sure that our elected officials care. So thank you so much, Joanne, for your passion. Yeah on this issue and for putting out that statement it's important that we get folks to really at the at those elected official official levels to yeah. care and we do need diversity all throughout all of these uh areas that matter to us and this is why we've been pumping this election being so important because yeah. we need diversity we need diverse voices no excuses this is why yeah. we've been pumping our song no excuses man you know what i'm saying it's election season here and and for for me you know i'm we don't tell people who to vote for over here, like on other media outlets or, you know, they're endorsing this person or that person. But I do know that, like, this is no excuses season for us. And, yep. man, and people who've been quiet on issues that are impacting our community. No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. see how it goes. Now, Silence is deafening. Yeah, real, real quick, um, you know, it came on the radar, radar here today. You're having, a uh, before we let you go, you're having a press conference tomorrow, right? Yeah, we're doing it at the administration building. All right, and, and you're you're also you're tomorrow you're laying out a lot of the stuff that we, you discussed here today as well. Yeah, exactly. And what's you know what's frustrating is that a lot of the stuff that we're saying is not new and it's not even transformative. It's just doing the work that the community has said is going to work for a long time. And addressing gun violence solves a whole host of other issues as well, right? We're talking affordable housing, access to healthcare, community centers things like that. These things uplift all of our communities. That's how we get things done. So by addressing the, the root causes, addresses so many other symptoms in our society as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, State Senator Joe Wynn, candidate for King County Executive. Thank you for taking the time with us this morning. Last minute. I thought it was important when I saw that press release go out. I was like, you know what? If you're talking about uh, gun violence disruption, let me get you on air right now. So thank you for being them and coming it. on air with us. Thank you, thank thank you so, much. so much. Have a good day. Thank you again for having me. Yep. Absolutely. Trey holiday. Yeah. I mean, this is the, the, the issues we keep on talking about. And to be honest, um, you know, I think that when I talk about being in a transformative time, so much is it is, a, is about representation and the fact that we have so many different folks that are bringing their lived experience into this candidacy, into these races. That's important because exactly what he was talking about there. We need to hear these messages coming from those offices, coming from those elect elected officials and their administration we need to hear that you know c concentrated message as you said everybody's saying saying the same thing that's where a lot of times people who have been a little bit remiss of the issue are like oh well that's not really my issue they start to pay more attention so i just I, i'm really appreciating the fact that this race is giving us the opportunity to inject that diversity that's so needed yeah well you know um i just it's crazy that that we sit here and we have a discussion about <clears throat> how so many people are so quiet on things life or death. And I mean, you know, Prosecutor Satterberg, he broke it down because it's like there's there's a reason for people in in politicians to care no matter what, even if they're not concerned about us per se as people hopefully they are but of course there's there's the the violence the impact of violence impact on community and everything else there's the economic cost you know it's very expensive like i said and then there's also people who's like man property value maybe that's what you're into you know maybe you're into real estate is this bringing down a property value is it bringing down whatever there's so many different things that you would hope that it didn't have to go that far but you know i mean when people look at this issue but it's just it's just kind of mind boggling to me that, that we can't we can do so many amazing things in this city, but we can't get all of our electeds on the same page. And you know what? The thing is, is y'all can't run and hide because we have seen you all work together on messaging around COVID. See, it'd be different if there was no blueprint, Trey Holiday. People be like, ah, we've never seen these guys on messaging. We've seen y'all all fall in the line around COVID.
So don't say it can't be done. Don't say political ideology or this and that or anything else. We saw you guys gave us an outstanding example and one of the very best in America as detailed there by the New York Times and everything else, how the political ecosystem here of elected officials work together in an amazing way to combat COVID-19. I would say this down there at city council and over there across the street at county council, you know, elected officials and appointed officials, Man, we're just looking for part two. We've seen you do it in part one around COVID. Let's all get our message here around gun violence. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. And I think that it's so important um, that we eradicate this issue and and really take it to heart. It's a, it's a both and approach, a holistic approach, not just the investments, not just the care, not just the voices, but all of it together, you know, and really learning from the families, uh, being able to center them in all of this work. Because as we said here, they've been hearing silence, definitely silence. And it's important that we start to change all of those dynamics to change this entire situation. Yeah, and if I get one more email from anybody out who's running for office and you talking about you raising money, and you ain't sent out no email or no messaging or shown no concern or hug no mama or nothing around this gun violence issue, we might just have to put some of these emails up on the screen. There we go. You know what I'm saying? This is a perfect opportunity right now. Remove me from your email list. Do not be emailing me asking for campaign funds and everything else because clearly your campaign doesn't impact the issues that impact me. 